What's going on guys, Dan Watson, and the solar eclipse is coming really, really soon, just a month away from when I'm putting out this video. So I wanted to kind of go over some things that you should keep in mind for it, some of the gear you should use, protection, as well as some general tips for shooting it. Now, unless you've been under a rock, it's one of the biggest events, and one of the reasons it's huge is because not only does this event not occur very often, it's actually, if you're in the United States, from the East Coast to the West Coast, there is going to be a viewing area where you're gonna be able to view the total eclipse. Now, uh, here's a sign for that. You can kind of see some of the areas. There's a, a ton of different tools that you can calculate where the sun is gonna be at that time, no matter where you're gonna be inside the United States. Now, if you're not in the area of totality and you're just outside of it, you will see a partial eclipse, which is still extremely cool and you should definitely make uh, the preparations to be able to photograph it and actually that's going to be the most dangerous part of it for viewing with your eyes and also with your camera so that's really the area we need to focus on from a safety perspective so let's take a look at some tips and some general shooting things that you need to keep in mind when shooting the solar eclipse so the first is definitely safety and i'm going to show you the cheapest way to go with most of this stuff these i picked these up from b h a couple bucks came in a five pack so good for the whole family and these will protect your eyes during the eclipse. Now, here's what you need to keep in mind. The most dangerous part is gonna be the partial eclipse, and that is gonna be about an hour long, and in most of the areas of the United States, so you're, that's all you're gonna see. So if you're viewing a partial eclipse, you need to make sure that you're viewing that through these and that you keep your glasses on all the time. It's gonna be the safest and best way to go. Now, if you're in the area of totality, during that total eclipse, you can actually remove these glasses and take a look at it, and then when you begin to see the sun peeking back around the corner, that's when you need to put them back on again. So that's the main thing you need to keep in mind for your safety. I'll go over another tip of that in a second. The other is gonna be your camera itself. These are very cheap, inexpensive filters. I think these are under 15 bucks. You can better get them on Amazon, b and I've got links for all this stuff in the description below, so check that out. You can put these right over. They fold up around your lens. You can get them in different sizes. And these are gonna make your cameras completely safe to be able to view directly at the sun. These are uh, kind of like extremely powerful ND filters. If you're going to use ND filters, which you kind of can use, you should use over a 10 stop, which is not your normal ND filter, but at least 10 stops. Don't leave this, your camera exposed to the sun for an extremely long period of time. Very short times is gonna be the best way to go. Uh, it, if you want to be the safest way possible, this is gonna be it, but at least use a 10 stop ND filter, which is gonna filter some of that light out and make it not quite as powerful for your camera. So after safety, let's talk about some general tips. You're definitely gonna to wanna to shoot these in manual. If you were shooting in aperture priority or even in, your, uh, in any of your automatic modes, you're gonna to wanna to be very careful on how you're metering them. Generally meeting it, metering just outside of where the sun is is gonna be your best bet, but ideally, I would keep this thing in manual. Now your best image quality with virtually every lens is gonna be about f8 to f11. If you want kind of that starburst flare, you're gonna to need to be at about f22. The quality on that is not as good, so I'd recommend taking a couple pictures like that and then bumping it down to about f8 to f11 for most of your pictures if you're looking for the best quality that you can get. A stable tripod is also gonna be in your best interest. Uh, not only is this thing far away and you're gonna be using a long lens probably, but you're gonna to wanna to be able to keep this thing stable for a long period of time. So you're gonna want a nice steady tripod for that as well. And virtually anything will work for that. Now lens selection is also gonna be very key. If you're viewing just the eclipse, you really wanna be at at least 400 millimeters to be able to get a nice, a uh, nice image of the eclipse itself. However, if you don't have a 400 millimeter lens and you can even use some wider lenses like 24 to 70, so you get some really creative imagery. If you're shooting between two buildings and you, and you put it right in between two buildings, you get some other events that are coming through, some scenery, some landscapes coming through the shot as well. You can actually use a wide angle lens to get some really creative shots, but if you're viewing the solar eclipse by itself, then you might want a longer lens at least 400 millimeters in length. So if you're looking at your different cameras to pull that off on, a full frame camera 400 millimeter plus lens is gonna be very expensive. Definitely something you're gonna to wanna to rent or look at renting. If you're using an APS-C cameras, they do have some super zooms that will go up to 400 millimeters and above. And the same thing kind of goes with your micro four thirds kind of cameras. And so uh, you keep those focal lengths in mind. If I'm shooting with a 200 millimeter lens on this one, it's actually gonna be a 400 millimeter equivalent. So sometimes your smaller sensor cameras for this can actually be the best way to go. Another tip is gonna to be to always put your camera in live view. 
Even if you're wearing glasses, you can look directly at the sun in this, but the safest way to go is gonna be in live view. You still need to protect your actual camera from that, but if you have a camera that has live view mode, you can actually look at the screen, and that is gonna be safe to look at without these glasses. So it makes it really helpful for composing your image because you're able to do it without these glasses on and really get a true feel of what it's gonna be like. Now, if you're using a camera like this with an electronic viewfinder, you can use the electronic viewfinder and look at it as well. However, on most DSLRs, or on all DSLRs, these are optical viewfinders, and if you look through this, it's basically the same thing as looking directly into the sun. So that is not gonna be safe. If you have a camera like this, you need to put your camera in live view, you should put it in live view, and then look at the screen, and that's how you're gonna compose your image. But again, if you have a mirrorless camera, you are safe to use either the electronic viewfinder or the screen itself to use it and look at the sun without glasses. So those are just some general tips. There's gonna be a whole lot more coming out with this. Uh, keep your safety in mind. Take a look at these charts. There's some cool apps that you can download as well for viewing where the sun is gonna be at whatever time. If you're not in the area right now, it's gonna be very difficult to get there. It's such a popular event right now. But even if you're viewing the, the partial eclipse, there's gonna be some really nice imagery that you're gonna be able to get. Kind of experiment around with some of your scenery. You can practice using the actual sun. And again, keep it safe with using these filters and some eye protection as well. And you should be really good to go. So thanks a lot for watching. Stay tuned, a whole lot more to come.